All right, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, we're gonna do the preview of uh, John Jones and Cyril Gann for the UFC Heavyweight Championship, which is gonna go down next month. Um, first of all, we got a bombing two months of, of UFC, MMA, just combat sports ahead of us. Uh, it, it starts this week with uh, Span and Krylov, which is uh, guaranteed to be fireworks. Um, we got the return of John Jones. We got McGregor and his whole uh, show business machine starting to roll right now with the Ultimate Fighter. We got UFC London with Usman and Edwards and Fiziv and Gagey all on the same card. We got uh, Adesanya Pereira rematch or three match or quadruple match, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we got Bo Nickel coming to the UFC and making his debut. Uh, of course, coming from Dana White Contender Series. We got just amazing, amazing, and 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 that's not even uh, not even mentioning what's going on outside of the of the UFC MMA realm. We got Gordon Ryan and Felipe Pena also doing their fourth match this weekend. We got Jake Paul uh, fighting Tommy Fury. Each one has his own opinions on this fight and, and Jake Paul, but but uh, everybody's tuning in whether you hate him or you like him. Um, so after a couple months of maybe relative quiet, except uh, a phenomenal fight between... Volkanovski and Makachev, uh, which also for me has has I take some from that fight for my analysis of uh, Jones versus Gann, um, which we'll dive into. Um, of course, uh, I'll give you my prediction for this fight in the end of uh, of these analysis. Um, so just let's get into it. So I have the tell the tape right here. Um, Wins, losses, draws. So John Jones has 26 wins, one no contest. Of course, the, the downward elbow, which in my opinion should be completely legal. I don't understand how the 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 angle of the elbow coming into uh, a fighter, um, like how is it legal for you to knee someone in the head when they're standing in the clinch? In the clinch, um, but illegal to elbow them from within their guard is is uh, I don't understand this this particular rule um, and zero losses for John Jones of course. Um, excuse me, we got one loss by DQ and one no contest for uh, DC for the fight against DC where he used the the infamous pictogram or or whatever it is, um, and we got. Cyril Gann with 11 wins, um, very impressive some of them, and one loss to, uh, of course, Nganu, which turned into a, an NCAA wrestler for one night to control Gann and win the fight by taking three rounds of control. Um, now everybody's saying, yeah, if Nganu could take Gann down, and control him. We got John Jones. What was he? Uh, 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 a junior college national champion. Of course, he would be able to to take him down and control him and maul him on the ground with his phenomenal ground and pound. And he really does have some nasty, nasty ground and pound with his, these long limbs that he has and the leverage he's able to to generate and and. I'm not the first one to commentate uh, on John Jones being a nasty, nasty guy inside the octagon, just looking to cut and and break stuff and yank stuff, and he's a really nasty fighter. But a lot of people are saying if Nganu could take him down on one knee or whatever, uh, John Jones could for sure do it as well. And I think what we saw with Volkanovski and Makachev. Um, kind of projects onto this fight. Uh, how so? Uh, we saw that when when uh, an inferior quote unquote grappler um, 
being Volkanovsky, faces a, just a, a grappling machine in Islam Makachev, just really an elite, elite uh, grappler. Um, if his only focus is to nullify the grappling and counter and defend and, and not be taken down and get up when he's taken down, and he's preparing for that with a good camp, with good training partners uh, and good coaches, uh, we saw that you can actually defend even if you haven't been wrestling your whole life. And I think Gan will be prepared for um, the wrestling of John Jones. I don't think this fight is going to go down. Um, it's not going to be decided on the ground or in the wrestling exchanges. I actually think there are two major points for this fight. So a bit more from this top tape. We got 6-4 and 6-4, which is a very interesting thing uh, in the height for these both gentlemen. We got 245 uh, pounds for Cyril Gann, and the last weigh-in, of course, for John Jones was 205. He's going to weigh in at maybe, we don't know, but it could be 240, it could be 250, it could be anywhere in that range. He, he claims he's, uh, he's a, well, like a real heavyweight now. Um, we got the 84, actually it's 84 and a half from what I remember for John Jones and 81 inch reach for Seal again, and they're both orthodox, but they both tend to switch stances a lot and three years of, of age difference, but a lot of experience on the John Jones side of the equation. A lot of experience. He's had like what, 14 title fights? 14 title fights. Cyril Gann has 12 fights from his pro debut. 12 fights, 14 title fights since he was 23, that is John Jones. So what are the two things I think are gonna decide this fight? Um, first off, I think we have to look at, at the long-range striking as one of the more important realms of this fight. Um, I think Cyril Gann has a very, very interesting style of in-and-out. Um, it's very different from what we've seen from other uh, kickboxers, karate fighters, Muay Thai fighters, in that we saw it in the fight against Nganu, we saw it against Tuivasa, we saw it against... Basically, everybody he's fought. Derek Lewis, huge, huge bombers. If they connect, everybody says, if they touch your face, you're going down. If they connect, you're sent to another realm, to the shadow realm. And the, and the right, we, we saw it with Derek Lewis several times with Ngannou, basically every time. Look what he saw, did to Stipe. Look what he did to... to uh, over him, he, he literally sent a heavyweight man flying with a punch, with an uppercut. It was a scary sight to behold through the television, through the TV. Um, so just imagine how it, how it looked from from up close. Um, so we see with Gun, we see this interesting in and out where he goes in, and unlike many other. Strikers, he, he doesn't come out and try to avoid the next punch. He comes in and when the counter comes back at him, he actually rolls into the counter. Not with the counter, not outside. He doesn't try to slip that much. We saw it against Nganu, we saw it against Derek Lewis, like I mentioned. He goes into the punch, into the bicep, into the arm, trying to nullify the incoming attack. So he blitzes with a jab or one, two, and then he just dips his head, covers up, and goes into the bicep or into the punch. And then he catches it when it's not in full speed yet. So you understand? He goes into the punch with his guard up. And that way, if you've ever boxed or, or kickboxed or done any striking, you know when somebody's too close to you. You can't generate that much power if you're not ready with a quick uppercut or or a short hook. You're, you're trying. When somebody blitzes in, he's, he's out, he's out, he's out. He blitzes in. 
you immediately think he's going to blitz in and out. So you go with a big overhand right or a long, long hook. And, and when you do that and he just goes into your punch, into your, you're even farther into the range. You hit him with your bicep, you hit him with the out, inside of your arm or whatever. You don't really generate that much power and then he blitzes out. So you've hit him, you've now kind of lost your balance. It's, it's already your second or your third punch and then he blitzes out, right out of your range. He did it beautifully against Nganu, against Tuivasa, against everybody he's fought. And let's remember that John Jones... John Jones, John Jones's main issues were with big, long strikers. So the first one to kind of show us that hole, maybe in the game of John Jones. Uh, and of course, uh, we have all that he didn't really train and he wasn't focused and he wasn't prepared. But Alexander Gustafsson with with some good fundamental basic striking like good hooks good crosses a, a solid jab good body kicks he had jones in some trouble in that first fight and of course jones came back and just demolished in the second fight but that was a little chink in the armor that we've seen in john jones now then we, we've seen it with, with Dominic Reyes and Thiago Santos. And of course, again, we have the same story with he wasn't prepared. He wasn't really excited and, and everybody just wanted to see him lose. And he was like kind of taking it easy, not really training. But if we look at the facts, he only had real trouble with long, tall fighters that are good, solid strikers, that have a good foundation of striking. Um... Many people think he lost the Dominic Reyes fight. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence with that one. I'll have to rewatch it again before this fight. Um, and I think Cyril Gann being uh, a what, 30 year old kickboxer or whatever. Uh, and from what we've seen in the octagon, he's an elite, elite striker. He's faster than those guys. He's uh, same length or longer than those guys. And his in and out movement is just superior to any of those guys. I actually think he's he's both technically better and faster, and of course way bigger than all the guys I've mentioned before. Um, and John Jones's virtuoso actual like masterpieces were against those DCs and Rampage Jacksons and. Uh, those fighters who like to um, more fight in close range, more like this boxing range, or or in DC's case, even even dirty boxing range, which gets me into the next uh, point, where I think this fight is gonna really be decided is in the clinch, because we've seen John Jones be nasty for the clinch, like, look what he did to Lyoto Machida, just just grabbed his head and yanked it with a beautiful guillotine and just put him to sleep and dropped him like a like a dead body where like a, there, there's no better way to put it Lyoto Machi just just lay there with his eyes rolled back just and John John's walking away with one of the coldest photos in the in the history of the sport um, John Jones has these beautiful elbows upwards elbows, even foot stomps and knees and takedowns from the clinch and, and he can he can rattle you. He can he rattle you with a knee and then just foot sweep you to make you lose your balance and then elbow you in the head at the same time. He's just a mean nasty creative fighter. But we've seen uh, in Cyril Gann's case he is very solid from the clinch, good fundamental clinch, kind of kickboxing Muay Thai um, uh, a mix, uh, good understanding of where the danger is, uh, where he wants to be, where he doesn't want to be, he can break the clinch very good, um, and I think if, if Cyril Gann can control the clinch, get out when he wants, 
and and maybe even do some damage and not take too much of his own. He's in a very good position because his outside striking. I'm telling you, if John Jones and and I have massive respect for John Jones' striking ability, massive mess. He's a he's a genius uh, when it comes to striking, but just the experience of pure outside striking and kickboxing and and the speed and the the smoothness of of Gan, I think is 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 very high level now if john jones can start make doing some damage in in the, these clinch situations the elbows the the knees the kick the 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 foot stomps maybe trip and take him down by the fence now i think gan will be able to get up just like volkanovsky did against makachev but if he can even you know just make him miserable and, and clinch and trip him and clinch him and elbow and if if John Jones can make the clinch miserable for Cyril Gann, I think he he will make the fight uglier than Cyril Gann is used to. Um, and then when they're in distance, Cyril Gann will be less. Uh, he will be more hesitant to to maybe come in. Um, of course, if if John Jones can take him down, control him. Uh, there's no question if he can do that he'll just with his greco-roman proficiency and just a variety of takedowns he can get he'll just do it um but here's my prediction uh i think i think cyril gan with his reach with the three-year off layoff of john jones with him being a bit heavier Carrying a bit more muscle, not being as long compared to his comp opponent as he is used to being, I think Cyril Gann, now it's a close fight, a very close fight, but I think Cyril Gann has this belt. So that's my prediction, guys. Um, if you like this video, of course, like and subscribe. That will be very, very well appreciated. If I missed any points that, that you think I should have went over, if you have a, a different prediction, as many people do, many, many, uh, many great minds in sport do, uh, have a different prediction than mine, um, feel free to comment and tell me what you think. Feel free to comment about uh about this fight about different fights maybe you want to hear me uh do another analysis of a different fight coming up um that's it have a have a great great couple months with with what what's going on in the sport and in, in combat world uh I'm, I'm 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 just licking my fingers uh anticipating these next couple months so Enjoy, guys, and see you next time.